And let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this unspeakable gift that you have given to us. You gave your son that we could live for you and live with you forever. So again, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you for this unspeakable gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And again, welcome to the House of Prayer Ministries where Father God is glorified, where Jesus Christ is Lord and the Holy Spirit is welcome. Amen. We're going to talk about a place that you have with God. Are you saved? Amen. Do you know Jesus? Then there's a particular place that he has for you. Amen. Now, let's go to Job chapter 1. Amen. Glory to God. Job chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse 9. Okay. Then Satan answered the Lord. Because see what happened. Uh, Satan was before God, all right? And God asked him a question. He asked him about his servant Job and presented and said, Look, my servant Job is perfect. Amen. All right. Um, and then Satan said, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do Job fear God or not? I mean, in other words, then you he's doing it for a reason. He has an ulterior motive for serving you, you know. All right, verse 10. Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. So there is a hedge. Amen. There's this invisible fence around each and every one of God's people. Amen. That the enemy cannot enter in. Amen. So you can prosper in this place. You'll be protected from the enemy in this place, and, and the enemy cannot get in. So what's happening is Satan could not get to Job because of his hedge. Amen? All right. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. Talk a little bit about this hedge. All right. This invisible force field around you that the enemy cannot get to you. Amen? All right. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. Amen. We'll wait till you all get there. Amen. All right, verse 7. If thou doest well. Now, see, the background of this is Cain and Abel. All right? And Abel had given God a wonderful offering, and Cain's offering was not accepted before God. And Cain's countenance had fallen. All right? Now, God is talking to Cain. Verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And see, this is the thing. See, there again is his place. This force field, this fence, this hedge of protection around God's people where the enemy cannot get in. Even sin can't get in. But see, God was saying to Cain, if you continue to be up, upset and mad and you're going to make a decision that's not going to be good. And now sin can enter into your life because of your decision. But sin cannot enter into your life. All right. So at this point, you know, we're talking about a hedge of protection around every person, every believer. But do you know when Jesus came, there's even a better place? Now, you still have this hedge of protection, don't get me wrong, but that's even a better place now that God has provided for you. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory to God. All right. We are going to go actually to John chapter 10. Amen. John chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 1.
Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. All right. Now, Pastor Alice, can you read, uh, start at verse 1? Amen. We're going to take our time today. John chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entered in by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Now, this is really wonderful. Now, I know you're God's people. Now, who loves pre now, who loves good preaching? Does anybody love good preaching? Y'all do? You do? You love good preaching? Do you have your favorite preachers? There's some preachers, you know, there's some preachers in history that really preach well, famous preachers, and seeing preachers today. Do you have your favorite preacher or your list of favorite preachers that you have? Amen. Now, who's the best preacher that ever was, ever been, or ever will be? Jesus, amen. So Jesus is coming to you, and he is preaching to you right now. This is a message that he has presented to his people, amen. And this message is still alive today, amen. So Jesus is going to preach to you this morning, amen. Well, again, he's been preaching to you every morning. Glory to God. Praise now, God. now, as we are knowing that Jesus is talking to us, we really want to kind of let that sink in just a little bit. He's talking to you, amen? So if there's anybody you could ever trust, amen, you could trust God and you can trust Jesus, amen? So let's listen to these words again, amen? All right. And I'll begin to read here. Verily, verily, I say unto you. So when he says verily, verily, it's really important. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. See, there's some, you know, there's some wolves and sheep's clothing out there. Everybody that's presenting themselves for your good is not for your good. Everyone that says they're presenting the gospel to you is not really presenting a gospel, not a full gospel. You have to understand who's really before you. Amen. Okay, now, verse three, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name and leads them out. So if you are of the Lord, you are one of his sheep. You're the ones who follow him. Amen. There's a lot of people out there saying they're following him, but they're not following him with their heart and they're not following him with their deeds. But we are following him with our whole heart. Amen. Now, it says here, and he putteth and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. Amen. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. So the sheep did not have confidence because they sound good. They look good, but there's just something not right about them. They, you know, they didn't have full confidence in the things they're hearing. But when Jesus came, they had full confidence because it's just something about him. There's something in their spirit that, that just said, wow, this is the Messiah. This is the one. Amen. The sheep knew who he was. They responded to Jesus. Amen. I am the door by me. If any man enter in. See, we're talking about a place now. And out shall find pastor. The thief cometh not. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd of the, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep or not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. 
and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. See, all these people who have confidence, all right, in someone else other than Jesus, they have an end, all right? Well, it calls a person they have confidence in that is not Jesus, that person is not going to protect them, that person is not for them, that person is going to leave them because they are hireling. They're just are in it for themselves, not in it for the people, all right? Now, let's continue. The hiring fleeth because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. See, this is the third time Jesus said that. He wants you to have confidence in him. Amen. I am the good shepherd and knoweth my sheep. He knows who you are. If you are really following Jesus, he knows who you are. Amen. He knows those imitators. He knows those liars, but he knows those one who truly loves him with the whole heart. Amen. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and other sheep ha I have, which are not of this fold, them also must I bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Amen. So it's not just for the Jews anymore. Now the Gentiles are going to come into, you know, the fold. Amen. Therefore, do my father love me because I laid down my life. Amen. That I might take it again. No man taking it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received of my father. All right. There was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these things. Many of them said, he hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, these are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. And it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How doest thou make us, uh, how long doest thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered and said, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. All right? So, those who are not of his sheep, amen, they're not following him. Amen? So, the ones who... So if they're not a follower of Jesus, if they don't love Jesus, not a believer in Jesus, and they're not ones who are going to eventually come into his fold when they hear his words, then they're going to be against Jesus. They're not going to believe his words. They're not going to understand him. Amen. But we who are his sheep, when we hear his voice, when we hear his words, we understand who he is and we come into the fold. Amen. Amen. All right. Verse 26. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Isn't that wonderful? We talked about the gift of God last week. He has given us who follow him eternal life. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So Jesus says, no man, nobody, no devil can pluck you out of his hand. Amen. But then verse 29 says, my father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I am my father or one. Amen. So the title of this message is. Amen. Palm of his hand. Amen. You are in you sheep. You're in the palm of his hand. There's no greater place to be. You know, the place of the heads of protection is a really great place. Amen. There's another place called the shadow of his wings. Amen. Which is a great place. These are great places. Amen. That are pre presented before the saints. But the palm of his hand is the greatest place that he has made for you. Amen. See, you have a promise of eternal life. Are you Christians? Do you love them? You have a promise of eternal life, and no man, no devil, no enemy, no ruler of darkness, it doesn't matter who they are, they cannot pluck you 
out of Jesus' hands, and they can't pluck you out of the Father's hand. You have a place of safety. Amen. Glory to God. See, when we understand what God has done for us, amen, then we can really truly be who God has called us to be. Because if we don't know what God has done for us, how can we be? How we can we have this wonderful confidence? Amen. But if we know what he's done for us, we can have perfect confidence. Amen. Now, I have presented to you a sermon that Jesus spoke 2,000 years ago, and it's still relevant today. Amen? Do you know the prayers that Jesus prayed are still prevalent today too? Now let's go to John chapter 17, because Jesus is praying to the Father, and he's praying for you, and he's praying for me. Amen? See, these are important things that you have to learn. Amen? Now, John 17. Pastor Alice, can you start at verse 1, please? John chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. You know, it's something so interesting. We know that Jesus prayed. We know Jesus went to the mountain to pray. We know he went to the garden to pray. We know he went to the wilderness to pray. Sometimes he prayed before his disciples. Sometimes he went away and prayed in private. Wouldn't it be so wonderful to know what Jesus prayed? Amen. Wouldn't you want to know what he prayed? So this right here is an insight that God is showing us what Jesus was praying. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Continue, Pastor Alice. Verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thy me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Verse 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thy gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now, Amen. Now, see, you don't understand. This is something called, well, it's something that the Father knew who you were. There's something he put in you. Amen. And see, there's something in you that when you heard the word of God, when you heard the preacher, you came to Jesus. Amen. And see, these are the ones that the father has given to Jesus. Amen. And those ones who the father has given to Jesus. Amen. He has given you eternal life. Amen. Glory to God. All right, let's continue. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Amen. So we are his followers. Amen. There's something different about us and everybody else. Now the word is going forth throughout all the world. Amen. I mean, the Bible is written. Amen. You know, these this prayer that we are uh that we're reading right now, the whole many in the world have read this prayer. The sermon that Jesus preached in John chapter 10, many have heard or read that sermon amen but everybody's not responding to it amen but we who are the fathers we are responding when jesus talks we believe there's a reason why some people don't believe and there's a reason why we do believe amen because we believe and jesus is saying these who you have given me they have believed the word that i have spoken amen, amen. see if you don't believe the word that god has spoken if you don't believe the word that jesus spoken that's going to be judgment amen but for you who are the followers of christ amen because you have believed the words that god has spoken through jesus christ amen there's going to be a reward an eternal reward amen mm -hmm. you're going to enter into the kingdom of god amen and you actually already have entered in amen all right. But he's talking and he's praying to the father about you. Amen. See, Jesus is praying for you and presenting you to the father. Amen. Continue, Pastor Alex. Verse eight. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. 
And now I am come no more. And now I am no more. Excuse me. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Amen. See, Jesus is saying that all the ones that the Father gave him, none of them is lost. Amen. Remember what we said? No one could pluck them out of the Father's hand, and no one could pluck them, which is you and I, out of Jesus' hand. Amen. Except the son of perdition, amen, which was Judas. What the scripture said, that it was going to be a traitor among the mist. Amen. So, he's kept them. He's kept you. Amen. amen. Glory to God. And this is, this is an eternal blessing. Amen. You know, there's something in the old church saying that God is a keeper. Amen. We don't hear it that much these days, but God is a keeper. Yes, Has God kept you? Yes. Amen. He is a keeper. Amen. I right, continue, Pastor Ellis. Verse 13. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have joy fulfilled in themselves. Amen. See, now you should have joy because your eternal life, you know, no one can take it from you. Amen. 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 It is a done deal. You are going to have eternal life with Jesus forever. Amen. We just say, wow, you know. When people say, well, you know what? I want to be rich. I want to be a millionaire. Or another person can say, well, I want me a beautiful wife. Or I want a handsome husband. Or I want a successful career. Or I want to be in great shape. I want to be a professional basketball player or, or a professional football player. I want to be a great artist. Or I want to be a scientist. I want to do all these wonderful things. But you know, the greatest thing that you can receive is what? Eternal life. Amen? Amen. Eternal life is the greatest accomplishment that you can accomplish, but you can't accomplish it because it's a gift. There's nothing you did to work for it. Amen. It's amen. the greatest thing that you could ever have. And it's something that Jesus did for you. Amen. Yes. He did the work. Amen. That's right. And it is a gift to you because you believed in him. And now you have received this wonderful gift. Amen. Now the story is not over yet because now that you have eternal life, what are you going to do with it? Amen. You're going to live for Jesus. You're going to respond to his word. You're not just going to respond to the word of salvation. You want to respond to the words of life continually because he came like we read in John 10. He came that you will have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. We should be the, like we talked about last week. We should be the happiest people in the whole wide world. Amen. Glory to God. Continue, Pastor Alice. Verse 14. I have given them thy word, <clears throat> and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Amen. So now what's going on here? He said he prays that he will take you out of the world, but keep you from evil. Remember that when um, Cain, what God said to Cain in the Old Testament, he said that sin lieth at the door. See, sin could not come in. All right. But if, but if Cain made a decision, sin will get open, would, you know, would, there will be a door open for sin to come in. So what God is doing, he has you in the palm of his hand. Amen. But he's not taking you out the world. He's presenting you before the whole world. The whole world sees who you are. Amen. So he's not taking you out the world. He wants the world to see you. Amen. He wants to present you like a candle on a light stand. Amen. He wants you to be the salt of the earth. Amen. But he does. But Jesus with his wisdom says, but keep them from evil, because even though you're in the world, you have eyes and you have senses and you're looking outside and seeing what the world is presenting to you. Amen. And so the enemy wants to sway you. He wants he wants to present something. That looks better than what you have. But I present to you, there's nothing out there that's better than what God has already done for you. But the enemy is a deceiver. He is a liar. He is a trickster. Amen. So Jesus prayed that he would keep you from evil. Amen. That you will always understand the truth. Amen. 
and not enter into the lies of the devil. Amen. Continue, Pastor Ellis. Praise God. Verse 19. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou has loved me. Amen. Ba amen. 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 So the Lord, our Lord Jesus praying to the father about you. So this is your scripture. Amen. amen. Glory to God. These are your verses that your savior, your Lord, amen, is praying to the Father about you. So now that you're in the palm of the Father's hand, he wants you to receive the same glory that he had, amen? And he wants you to be one with God as he is one, amen? And see, the only way you can be one with God is in the Father's hand, amen? Outside the Father, you cannot be one with him, not one with the Savior. But inside, amen, you can receive the glorious things that God has has for you. You can receive the glorious relationship with Jesus and the Father. Amen. It's a wonderful place. Amen. It, it, see, it was not per se presented to Cain and Abel, this wonderful place. They had a wonderful place, but when Jesus came, that place was perfected. Amen. Glory to God. You are in a perfect place. Now, especially for the people who have been following us, and the people who are in our church. See, God is wanting something from you. He's been teaching you over these last four years, amen, these last five, four, five, six years, amen, preparing you, amen, to enter into something, okay? And I believe that this, if, if it's not the final lesson, it is one of the final lessons before you enter into something great, amen? But see, for you to enter into something great, amen, you have to be ready for it. And if you can receive this message, I present to you, you will be ready. Glory to God. Now, turn with me to Romans chapter 8, 28. Remember what we said in this perfect place. You have to understand, if you understand what Jesus has for you and what he's done for you, amen, you could be children of the kingdom, amen. amen. See, a lot of people are saying we're children of the kingdom. Oh, I receive Jesus Christ. I go to church all the time. I'm not saying that I'm a child of the king, amen. And you may be, but you're not, in, you're not operating in understanding. You're not operating in the fullness. You're not understanding the spirit realm, you know. See, God wants you to understand what he's presented and who you are so you can be truly children of the king. Amen. You can truly be sons and daughters. You truly can be stewards. You truly can be what he's called you to be. Amen. And it's, this is evidence that you are who you say you are and what he's provided for you. Amen. If these scriptures are resident in your life. now. Romans 8, 28. Pastor Alice, can you read that, please? Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, think about this. If you understand the scriptures that we've read before, amen, that you're in the Father's hand. And what Jesus has provided for you, and you're in this perfect place, amen. Then that gives you perspective. Everybody know what perspective is? Perspective. Just like a uh, a mature word, an educated word, you know. We may not say children understand perspective, but you know, when you're aged a little bit, you really understand it, amen. And it gives you a wisdom or ideal where things just don't bother you because you have perspective, you have understanding, amen. So you understand if you're in this place with God and understand what we've talked about, you have perspective, amen. You know that all things work together for your good to them that love God, which is who? Which is me, and it's you, amen. All right, to them who are called according to his purpose. So we don't have to worry about anything, do we? Everything that happens work together for my good. If my blessing came today, 
It works together. If my blessing didn't come today, it works together. Amen. If someone lied upon me today, it works together for my good. If someone blessed me today, it works together for my good. If I miss God in a way, it works together for my good because now I have experience and now I can repent and now I won't do it again. It works together for my good. Amen. Everything works together for our good. So what? I have perspective. Amen. When things happen, I have perspective and I don't go in a dreary land of sadness. All right. Because I know it's working together for my good. And see, when you know that it's working together for your good, you're, what's that? It's evident that you are a child of the king. Amen. You don't look like a child of the king when you, you know, when you die. Oh, somebody talked about me. Oh, man. Oh, someone lied. Oh, somebody. Oh, I didn't get the promotion when I wanted to. Oh, I got to pay this bill. and I don't have the money yet. And you're worrying and you're down. No, that's not a child of the king. It, <laughs> you have perspective. Amen. Those things don't bother you. I know who God is. I know who my father is. I know nobody can pluck me out of the hand of the father or out of Jesus. I know that I want to be receiving the glorious things that Jesus prayed for me. I know I can be one with the father. I know who my God is and I know who I am. I have perspective. Glory to God. Amen. So it's evident that I am a child of the king. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's continue. All right. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. We'll wait till you all get there. You know, there's a, great, there's a lot of great actors in the church. Oh, yeah. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, I had a blessed day. Oh, yeah, I believe God. I trust God, you know. And they can say the words, amen. And they can fool other people, but they can't fool Jesus. They can almost even fool themselves, but they know what's in their heart. They know, you know when you believe it. And you know when you don't. Amen. See, it is for us to believe it, to receive it. Amen. And don't understand. I want God wants you to understand. There not, may not be some days or there may be some days that you may not be exactly where you want to be. OK, but God does not want you to stay there. Amen. So remember, you're growing in the Lord and growing in the Lord. So if you're sad one day. Or you miss it one day. God doesn't want you to feel bad about it or want you to feel condemned about it, okay? He understands that there's a growing process, amen? But this is the place that we tend to grow to, amen? So if you haven't gotten there yet, don't worry about it. You will get there as long as you just stay in the truth, amen? So don't feel condemned. Don't feel bad if you blew it, all right? But this is something that can help you understand the place that God's going to take you to. All right. Now we're in Matthew chapter six, Matthew chapter six, verse twenty five. Pastor Alice, twenty five through twenty seven. Matthew chapter six, verse twenty five through twenty seven. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? Amen. So, glory to God. Now, what is it saying? We talked about respect that we're talking about now. Don't worry. Or in the day's terms, no worries. I know I hear that a lot. No worries, no worries, no worries. But don't worry. Don't worry. Amen. Don't fear is another way to say it. Amen. Why? Say, so take this. Why do you fear? Because you're taking thought for your life. Oh, what am I going to wear tomorrow? If I'm going to, what am I going to dress to? Am I going to dress to go to this meeting? It's going to be really appropriate where I wear. Or are they going to like what I wear? Or, you know, I'll gain a little bit of weight. Is it fitting right? You know, or, or you know, or, do I, am, I, what, am I going to have enough money to pay the rent? God just blessed me and I paid my rent, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay it next month, you know? I mean, all these things that people are worrying about, amen, and you don't have to worry. You know, it's like this. You know, we are pretty much are the smartest people on the earth, right? Human beings aren't the smartest people on the earth. Do you know what a bird brain is? Bird brains are really small, amen, and they're not that smart, all right? 
But guess what? They don't worry, do they? They know that God's going to take care of them. Amen. They have instinct. Amen. And because they do things that they, well, they know they're going to have food when they wake up in the morning. They know it's going to work out. They don't worry. If it's cold, they're okay. If it's hot, they're okay. All right? You know, if there's a vulture or some or there's enemies out there, they know what to do. They don't worry. And see, God takes care of the birds. Amen. He takes care of the flowers. All right? Now, these things are glorious things that God has made. But who is the glorious thing that God has ever made? It's you. Don't you think he's going to take care of you? He takes care of the birds. Why can't he take care of you? All right. So don't worry. He says, if you worry, because some people think it's going to bless them or it's a benefit to worry. Some people think worrying is a way to get what they want. But God says, can worrying at one stature, if you're 5'10", if you worry about it, can it make you 5'11"? All right. If you weigh 200 pounds, if you're worried about it, will you lose 10? No. I mean, worrying is not going to do anything for you. Worthy, worry won't bring anything good. Worry, worrying brings stress. It brings unbelief. It brings all these different adjectives that are not like a child of the king. Amen? Remember, you want to be a child of the king. And if you're worrying about this, oh, I'm worrying about this. I'm worrying about my job. I'm worrying about my relationship. I'm worrying if I want to be saved next week. I'm worrying about this. I'm worrying about that. That is not the child of the king. If you are truly a child of the king and you know it, and you know that nobody can pluck you out of his hands, that you know he's going to glorify you with the same glory he gave Jesus. Do you know he's going to make you one with God like he's one? Are you going to worry? You're not worrying about the devil. You're not worrying about the economy. You're not worrying about what other people think about you. You're not. And see, when you're not worrying, see, when you're on a job and they're talking, to, oh, have you heard? They're going to have a layoff. Everybody's worried. Everybody's afraid. And when you're not afraid, oh, why are you not afraid? Did you hear the news? No, I'm not afraid. God's got me. You represent yourself like a child of the king. Amen. But if you're like everybody else, you're not representing. Amen. But see, it's more than that because you can say the words, but they're not building your heart. You can say those words. Well, I'm not worried about anything. But if it's not in your heart, you know, then what are you? You're a hypocrite. Amen. Because you really don't believe it. See, we really have to believe it. We really have to live it. Amen. What makes us different than everybody else? What? We believe the words that Jesus said to us. Amen. There's other people out there that don't believe the word. But because we believe the word, we are his sheep. We are his sons. We are his daughters. We have entered in. And when we really believe, we're not going to worry about it. We're a child of the king. Amen. And again, if you listen to this on the Internet audience, if you feel like you've worried or you fall into some of these traps of the enemies or some of these traps of the world, don't worry about it. Just use this as wisdom and let it be a stepping stone. Say, I'm not going to fall into this trap again. Amen. Because I know what God has done for me. All right. Now, so we talked about perspective, which the children of the king have. Amen. We talked about they don't worry about anything. Amen. Did Jesus worry? He didn't worry at all. Not one bit because he knew who he was and knew who his father was. You have to know who you are in Christ. See, some of us know, oh, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God, but I have no faith in myself. I understand I have no faith in yourself, but I understand this. Jesus did the work for him and you. So in other words, now you are perfect through Jesus. Amen. You are perfected through him. So now you have full confidence in who you are because I have great confidence in not on my work, but I have great confidence in the person that God has made me. What God has done in my life is perfect. Amen. Let me ask you something. Is the work that God has done in your life, is it perfect? Yeah. Or you're not satisfied with what he's done in your life? A lot of people are not satisfied with what he's done. Oh, Lord, you ain't done this yet. You ain't done. I'm telling you. Be satisfied with what Jesus has done in your life. Amen. Because it's coming. You say, well, I want to pray more. I want to feel God's presence more. I want to see in the spirit more. It's coming. Amen. But you're perfect right now. Long as you believe the word that God has given you. Amen. If you're not believing the word that God has given you, then you're like the other people who are not sheep. All right. But if you want to be a child of the king, you have to believe the word. 
that God has given you through Jesus Christ. Amen. So are you going to worry? Amen. All right. Now let's go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. Amen. All right, Pastor Alice, when we all get there, verses 1 through 3. Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Amen. So Paul is speaking, and he's writing a letter. Great conflict, all right? Because he has preached, amen? And they have received the Spirit of God. They have received salvation, amen? But now he's left them, and now they're not operating in all the truth that he has preached. Why? Because they're looking at the other people in the city. They're listening to the enemy. They look all these other things. They got their eyes on, all right? But they have not continued in the word totally. Not now, see some of it, but not totally. So we have to enter into the word totally. What God has given us, Amen. Mm -hmm. So because they are now swaying because of their decision making, because they're looking at other people. Now He said, "Wow, you know, you're not operating in the things that I've taught you, Amen." Has anybody ever? Now we have some fathers here, you know. Now. Think about this. Let's say you're a really great baseball player, right? And you taught your son how to get a ground ball and throw the ball. Say you, your son plays shortstop. I mean, I believe most people understand this. Or maybe it's a world sport, soccer, right? Now, you are a great soccer player, you know? And now you've taught your son how to play soccer, right? And you taught him how to kick the ball in the net, amen? And he's been really good at it. You taught him in grade school he was good, all right? Now, in college, he's good, and he's playing on a professional team, all right? And he goes out there, and the techniques and the fundamental things that you've taught him, he goes out there and misses a goal. It's a really easy goal, and he blew it, you know? And you said, I said, well, I taught him the fundamentals. I know he can do it. I've seen him do it a thousand times. Why did he miss it, all right? Maybe because of the lights. Maybe because a lot of people are saying, oh, what great he is now. Now he's taking his focus off the fundamentals and start looking at the glorious things. It could be many things, all right? So the things that that father had taught him, or if you're a baseball player, that's how to talk, teach him to never miss a ground ball and throw that ball man out at first, all right? And then they miss the ground ball. It goes between the legs. So I taught him better than that. He knows what to do. See, God has taught you better. Amen. Many of the things that people are falling in, God has already taught them the truth. If they will just enter and continue in the truth, they will not fall. Amen. So Paul is perplexed. I know I taught them better. What's going on? All right. Continue, Pastor Alice, verse two. That their hearts may be comforted, being knit together in love and into all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. We're going to spend a little time here because this is really, really important. Amen. We talked about a soccer player. We talked about a baseball player, why they didn't do what they were taught to do. And talked about this, uh, these people here, you know, in Laodicea, why they're blowing it now, okay? And see what happens here. It's just like now their hearts might be confident being knit together in love and unto all riches of full assurance of understanding. So now we're talking about full assurance. God wants you to be fully persuaded. He wants you to have full, full assurance of what he's giving you. See, the thing about this is this. You won't have full assurance if you don't really believe God for the truth. Amen. First, you have to believe God for the truth. Amen. And see, the thing about it is, is see, in other words, you won't understand the fullness of what God has done when you feel like you got to do something yourself. You know, oh, well, it hasn't happened yet. So now there's some, it, there's some deficiency in myself. Now I need to do something different, all right? And so now you want to work something in the flesh, all right? But your blessing is in the spirit, amen? 
Oh, you know, oh, my blessing ain't came yet. My, what I'm gonna do? No, I need to pray more, okay? Or maybe I need to fast more. Or I need to go over here and get some wisdom. I need to do this. So you're working. Or maybe you know, I need to do this, and you're working. Is you're working yourself up because of the situation? But see, you don't understand the confidence that you have. See, your answer is not in the flesh. Your answer is in the spirit. Amen. So if there's a situation that you have, what do you do? I don't go here work. No, I go to Jesus. God, what do I need to do? Receive from the Father. Receive the instruction from God out of the Spirit. He will tell you what to do to get what you need. Amen. Start working outside of the Lord. Start working inside of the Lord. Because if you're in the Lord, you should have full assurance. Amen. And see, it's a mystery. We who believe God can't explain to everyone. We can't put it in words sometimes. All I can say, I just believe. I can't explain it. I just believe. I don't. You say, well, you ain't got it yet. But I know I got it. Well, how can you? I don't see it. Well, I know I got it. Well, I can't see it. How do you get it? How do you know? I don't know how to tell you. I just know I got it. Amen. We have full assurance of what Jesus has done. It is a mystery that we cannot explain. So we in the things of Christ. You can't come out and explain it all the time. You just have to understand it by the spirit, understand it by faith. God has done something in you that you understand it. I'm going to read this again. That their hearts might be comforted. Amen. See, if you believe God, you're in comfort. You're not worrying about it. People say, well, why? It hasn't happened yet. Why aren't you worrying? What? Are, you ain't did it. You're not doing anything. What's going on, sister? What's going on? I'm worried about you. All right? Because you are not worried about the situation. You don't understand the situation that you are in. You need to do something. I know you trust God. I trust God, too. But you need to do something right now. And you know, but say, sister, I know you love me. I know you care for me. I can't explain it. I just know I got it. I don't understand it. I wish I could explain it to you, but I just know it's done. Amen. I just trust God. All right. It says here, unto all riches, the foolish will see. In the spirit, there is like this is a spirit, and I'm outside the spirit. In the spirit, there is an abundance. Amen. Whatever you need, whether it's wealth, whether it's health, where it's prosperity, you know, where it's healing, where it's signs, where it's wonders. It's all here in abundance. So if I get here, I have all everything that I need. I have no worries. Everything I need, I got it. And people on the outside say, well, I don't see you got it. I don't see your new car. I don't see your new house. But I just know I got it. See, they're outside the spirit. I'm in. So I know I got it. They can't tell, but I can. All right. It is a mystery. Amen. Even the enemy don't understand who we are. It is a mystery. And see, when we're in this place of God, we have full assurance. Amen. We're not faking it to make it. We're being very honest with what we have. Amen. Because we're in him. Amen. The mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom are hid the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. We have the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and all that comes with it. Amen. We have fully assurance. Amen. And if you have this full assurance that we're talking about, then you are a child of the king. Amen. And you're ready to receive the abundant blessings that God has for you. Amen. And you know, you can't, a lot of times you have to grow into this because, you know, I'm sure many of you may be saved. Most of you probably been saved at least 10 years or so, maybe five or whatever. Some of us have been, some of us have been saved maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And over the time, wow, you know, as we're growing into this place, we'll say, wow, you know, it's been tough. It's been hard. It's been difficult. Amen. But guess what? If you really look back on it, those things, those difficult because Jesus blessed us to be into the place that we're in right now. So it really was just like exercises so we could enter into a wonderful place. It was not a problem at all. We looked at it as a problem. It was not. It was never a problem. The things that we had, we thought about, were problems. They were never a problem at all, if you really think about it. And think about this. See, when you're out here and you're going to this place, it's a difficult thing. But when you get in it, you have perspective. Many people who have gone through terrible things, they don't say they don't say they like what they went through, but they say they are grateful for the process. Because of where they are right now. I remember one time um, I had realized all the people had done terrible things to me. Has anybody had anybody do anything terrible to you? Say anything or 
untrustworthy people. And I was a younger man. And I said, wow, all the things they had done to me. But, you know, I had perspective. You know what I said, Lord? I don't thank you. I mean, I'm thankful for all the things that happened. But I am thankful, amen, that these things showed me who you are. And now because of these things I went through, now I can see you clearly because you have never done those things to me. You have never done those things that there's men and these women, how they were enemies, how they were sheep and wolves. I mean, they were wolves in sheep's clothing, how they were untrustworthy, how they were liars, how they were pretenders, all these things. When you loved them, they hated you, all those things, you know. But you, Jesus, never did that to me. And because I went through this, now I can enter into this wonderful relationship with you because now I can see you're not like these other people, you know. And because of that, now I can enter in with a full assurance of who you are. Amen. I have great confidence in who I am right now. And, you know, there's a lot of shiny people out here, handsome and shiny, say a lot of good things, say they love you. And then you don't have anything against them. But you understand you can't trust. that. But I can trust in Jesus. I have full assurance in Jesus Christ. I have no worries in Jesus Christ. Amen. And he's given me perspective of everything I went through. Amen. I am happy. Amen. I'm, ha I'm probably, you know, I'm happier than the wealthiest man in the whole wide world in the natural. Why? Because I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and I know who he has made me, and I have full assurance. People may not like me. People may talk about me. People may say this and that about me. Am I going to believe him? No. I have full assurance in who Jesus Christ has made me. I have full assurance what he has provided for me. I have full assurance where I am going. Amen. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they do because I am in him. Amen. So guess what? Now I'm representing as a child of the king. Amen. But if I want to say, oh, oh, this person talked about me and now I'm down. Or oh, this person didn't come through for me. And now I don't think I'm going to be able to do what I thought I was going to do because this person didn't keep his word. What? You don't think you can't do what you're going to do because somebody didn't keep his word. God is going to keep his word to you. God is the source. Amen. God is the one that's going to bless you. He's the one that lifts us up. He's the one that uh, puts people down. Amen. You don't have to worry about a person. Amen. God is going to be your source. Amen. And God is an abundant, infinite source. He got everything that you need. He will not fail you. Amen. And he will be on time. Glory to God. So I am just as happy as I can be. People don't understand it. Amen. They say, you don't have this yet. You don't have that yet. So what? They don't know who I have right now in Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Do you feel the same way? Do you? Glory to God. Now, last one. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. And see, if you are a child of the king, now you can enter into this last phase. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. All right, and it's going to be uh, pretty much our last verse. All right, Pastor Alice, are we all there? I pray you on the internet audience is turning your pages too. All right, Pastor Alice. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Be careful for nothing. So you don't have to be tipping, you know, how they say, you know, walking on eggshells, you know, worrying about what people want to say, worrying about, no, you just be you, amen, and be the best you you can be, amen, don't worry about it. just do what you got to do, be happy, you are free, so now we're talking about freedom, you know, children of the king, they are free, they're not in bondage by what people will say, they're not in bondage by the words, you know, when I was in a, um, working, they said, well, you know, Ray, we you know my pastor right now, but they said, Ray, you know, we can't do this because we work in this place and you know, you know, we make a certain salary. I said, No, I'm not limited to this salary. I mean, you might be limited to the salary, but I'm not limited to this salary. You know, I'm a Christian. God is gonna me keep I can do anything I want to do in God. Amen. I am not limited like you're limited, you know. I said, But no, Ray, you know, we can't really do these things, you know, because of the a, B, C, and D. I said, no, I don't have those limitations, okay? So I can walk around free. Everybody else in the plant, or, you know, I worked in the plant, they can be sad. They can be, they're mad at what the supervisor said, or they are talking about this fight, or they're talking about what happened here. You know, they're mad, they're depressed, 
Or they may be laughing about a situation or whatever. I'm just happy as I can be. Don't you want to go here and hear about what they said? No, I'm going to stay right over here. I'm happy. Why are you so happy? Don't you know what they say? Aren't you worried? I don't care. You know? What? Right. You're building a house? Don't you know what the economy is doing? No, I'm free. I'm free to build my house. I don't have to worry about what the economy is doing. I don't have to worry about the stats that they said. I don't have to worry about the economic stance in America. No, I'm free to do it. If I want to build a house, I can. If I want to go to the country, I can. Right. You going on vacation? Why? Don't you know this overtime? This, you know, when hell is overtime, I don't have to work overtime. You better get this overtime, man. No, I'm not worried about overtime. God is my source. All right. All these things, people try to control you by what they say. And don't get me wrong. If I want to work overtime, I'm free to work overtime. If I want to take a vacation, I'm free to take a vacation. Amen. I am free. I'm free from this world. You know, Jesus said that he has overcome the world. So if he's overcome the world, then I am overcomer too. Amen. Jesus said that he sanctified his word in the truth. Because, and he says he sanctified his word in the truth. I'm sanctified too. Amen. The thing about this is this. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So what happens is this. You're not, you're free to do all that you want to do. But see what Paul said, he said this. Everything I'm using my words and you know paraphrasing, everything to me is legal, all right, because I'm free, but everything is not really prudent, okay? All right, so even though I can do all things, I'm not gonna do all things, I want to use wisdom, okay? <laughs> all right, because you know, says a man, like you know, you can eat meat, all right, and you can eat your meat and bless it in Jesus' name, but uh. Weak, and he can't eat wheat, meat. And he before him, and it's going to weaken his faith. Then why eat meat before him? You know? So everything, I can eat my meat in freedom, but because this man is weak, I may choose not to eat my meat in front of him for his safety and for his spirit. All right? See, the thing about we have freedom, amen? Be careful for nothing. Be free, amen? But in everything by prayer and supplication. See, this helps you not be arrogant, amen? It's wonderful to have a holy arrogance, but not a fleshy arrogance. Amen. Some people say, oh, I just got to tell you the truth. I can't, I just can't keep it no more. I just got to tell you the truth. No, that's arrogance. That truth ain't going to, what you think is truth, not going to help that person. It may hurt that person. Amen. In everything by prayer and supplication, if you're going to say something, even though you're free to say it, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, say it in the spirit of truth, say it in the spirit of love, and be led by the Holy Spirit in your freedom. Amen. Glory to God. You, get, you are free to be you, but you're not free to hurt other people. You know what I'm saying? So God will give you wisdom. Amen. See, you're free. You know, you're one with all these wonderful things you have. They are good. Amen. But he's going to give you wisdom how to operate in this world. Amen. Glory to God. Now, we, we talked about this. And see, if you are free, then you are a child of the king. And you are ready to enter into this place. Jesus said this. He said, Father, give them the glory that you gave me. See, if you are ready, you're going to receive something from God. See, Jesus had an assignment. We talked about being commissioned, all right? Jesus had an assignment from God, all right? See, God wants to give you an assignment too. But you got to be ready for it. You know, you just got to be ready. Amen. And if you can be this way, if you can have this freedom that we're talking about, I mean, true freedom, not not fake, but truly free. And why do you have this freedom? Because you believe the word that God has preached to you. That's where your faith comes. You believe it's what, that's what separates you from everybody else. You believe him. Think about all the people who don't believe Jesus. The words that he's spoken, the words that is written in his book. And even Christians don't believe all of the book, all the words he said. Think about it. But you are a sheep. Why? Because you believe the word that he has spoken. And if you believe the word that he has spoken, you are a sheep. Jesus has prayed for you in uh, John chapter 17. That's you. He's prayed specifically for you. Amen. And now you can be a child of the king. You have this freedom. You have this full assurance. You don't worry and you have perspective. And now you're ready to enter into the great things that God has prepared for you. Now, my question to you is, are you ready? You are? Amen. Everyone stand.
And I just want to pray for you. Amen. And then we'll have personal prayers later. And especially you on the internet audience. You know, you may have felt like, man, you didn't have this understanding. You say, I've blown it, Pastor. I didn't understand how it really was. That's okay. Well, none of us, when we entered into the kingdom of God, none of us did it right 100%. We all have blown it. Amen. Except for Jesus Christ. So, but is this a something that you need to come up in? You on the internet audience, and even everyone here, just lift your hands. You on the internet audience, especially. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people. I pray for them that this day forth, they will believe the word that you present to them through Jesus Christ, whether it's spoken by a pastor where they read it in the word of God, in the Holy Bible. But when the word is presented to them, the word of truth, I pray that they will believe it. And I pray, Father, they will enter into the heart. And I pray it will change their life and they will walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen.